Hello lovely people, uh, today I will be making a loopback cable for somebody so I decided just to very quickly show you how to make it and uh, just to show you because I don't know why for some reason uh, it confuses a lot of people. So what is a loopback cable and why do we need it? We need a loopback cable for an audio interface to measure itself so we could get an impulse response using open sound meter, uh, smart or um, REW, I use home impulse to do the timing. So to do the um, cable itself, I have one here, but I'm making one for somebody else because they asked me to. So it, it, the only thing you need is you need some cable and some connectors. The connectors are RCAs that go is just a simple, regular, normal RCAs that go into the DSP, two connections. And these are six and a half mil jacks that go in the audio interface. So one goes in here and the other one goes from the other side into the output and these are mono jacks so they have only one positive and a negative and that's it and the only thing what the loopback cable does it basically it connects the output of the interface it doesn't matter left or right uh, it connects to the input and then the same cable goes out. Let me very quickly show you. So basically it looks something like this. You have these two that go, so this is not, it's not done yet. I'm just, I wanna show you how the connections go. So these two go like this together and then they go into the main cable. So the only thing I need to do is the, the most difficult kind of part is just splicing, do like a Y split of these, so positive so with positives, negatives with negatives, and uh, cable I left for the guy three meters, so it's like 10 feet, it's gonna be I think enough from the DSP in the back to the front of the laptop, and then the other one, again, another Y splice uh, that goes into the RCAs, and basically everywhere you have the same signal, so signal goes out from here, it goes into here and then goes into there. Now you could do this loop back with only one RCA without the split, but then uh, the DSP, it always has two inputs, left and right, whether it's gonna be like your low level inputs or auxiliary inputs, it's gonna be left and right. So you could do with one, but then you would have to reroute the DSP so that you would take uh, everything from one channel, but just to make it easier to plug and play, you just put a second one and just have uh, left and right stereo. So yeah, I'm gonna do the cable. I'm just gonna show you after that how it's, everything is made. You still hungry? Yeah, he's still hungry. Mm -hmm, meow. I just wanna show you how the splice looks like. So this is like the main cable that goes like the three meters, 10 feet. And this is gonna be one RCA and this is gonna be the other RCA. And uh, come on, focus, there we go. So the positives from one cable go, come on, focus. Yeah, so the positives go into like together and together. Then when I'm gonna solder this, I have glue lined heat shrink just a little bit that this heat shrink is gonna go over like this area just to cover this then after that I'm gonna solder the negatives oh man for some reason it really doesn't want to focus I'm gonna solder the negatives and then when I solder this a bigger heat shrink is gonna go right on top. And now I know everybody's gonna ask what cable are you using? So I'm using the same cable for my RCAs and for everything, which is Van Damme Pro grade uh, instrument cable. So it is, uh, where is it? Ultra pure sil silver plated OFC. So silver plated is only the uh, I believe only the insides, these 
some of these so it's i love this cable because it's very flexible not too thick i think it's six millimeter thick it's perfect for like most rcas and stuff so yeah just one splice i'm gonna solder it now i'm gonna do the other one and i'm gonna show you the final product after everything and this is a final cable so i have a splice here from one to two with the heat lined heat shrink so it is kind of stiff in this place but the rcas are uh, very um, soft the actual wire but this is going to be stiff and it's perfectly because there's solder joint inside and you don't want them to be flexing or moving so one uh, smaller one inside and the other one on top so kind of two layers of uh, glue line heat shrink exactly the same on this side a bit stiffer and the only thing i do slightly different is like you know these plastic thingies uh, that come like inside the RCAs so instead of these the only thing that I do is I just put some heat shrink that's the only thing different but apart from that just a few solder joints and that's pretty much it and basically this is the cable for the loop back so uh, I did quite a few cables like in general if you're in the UK and you need something like this or uh, interconnect for your home hi-fi or car like for running DSP to amps or that kind of stuff contact me and I can make something like this for you uh, because yeah it's it's like to make stuff it's not that expensive and the thing is like when you make custom lengths uh, any install will look clean especially when you can have any kind of RCA's plugs um, Again, I told you about the cable, the RCA's plugs from AliExpress. They're cheap, but they're good quality. They're very, very nice. And these are the same from AliExpress. But again, in the UK, they sell them exactly the same. You can buy them like uh, normal. But for what I found is for using with an audio interface, uh, it's much better to have them like this, 90 degrees because uh, if you would have them like normal they would be sticking out quite a lot and this is just looks cleaner and better in my opinion yeah so thank you very much for watching guys and i will see you in the next one